G'day and welcome back to another uh, episode of Surviving Mars. In this episode, we're actually going to go through and look at the engineering uh, research tree. Um, same as we've done for the other ones, we're just going to go through each of the research traits, remembering that they're randomised, so they won't be in the same order when you're playing the game. Um, but these research texts will be in your game. Uh, so we'll go through each um, each one at a time. So let's get straight into it. So the first one we're gonna look at is the decommissioning protocol. Um, it allows the clearing and more importantly, the salvage of destroyed uh, buildings. Now I do like this one, um, but I find that it's probably a medium game a skill that you actually need. So I'm finding that, let's say, and here's probably a perfect example, is I've already decommissioned this, um, and then you get the extra tab to actually just clear it. Um, but uh, what it will actually do is it will actually, I'm gonna pause anyway, but what it will actually do is it will allow um, to get a few extra parts. More importantly, what it will actually do is open up the area such I've decommissioned these, um, so you can actually User start incoming. rebuilding over those areas uh, again. So cleared it up, just opens up that spot so you can start building in those areas. The next one that we have on there is the low G rise, <laughs> low G high rise. Excellent building. And certainly um, I was very lucky in this game to get it early on. Um, and I think it was one of the first um, text that I've built and I have used it extensively. Um, low G high rise, low G high rise. Um, and I find, and I still have one here, a smart complex, um, but I do extensively use them. So it's a, it's a must have uh, research uh, and I'm sure you've already explored it yourself. Um, increasing cargo space, also another good one that is excellent early on. Um, Round about mid-game, I personally found I was a little bit low on cash, um, but certainly at the beginning, to have that extra cargo space is, is very useful. Next one, advanced Martian engines also. If you were lucky enough to get this early on, this is also, I feel, a game changer. It changes it from having 60 fuel in, um, at the beginning for your rockets uh, to 40 fuel. Um, and also, as it says, it also um, helps your shuttles. Um, so if you were lucky enough to get your, um, uh, your shuttle hubs, it does, uh, it does actually uh, use your shuttle hubs. And I've just noticed that this shuttle hub has been hit by a, uh, a meteorite. So we'll have to go fix that one, I think. Um, Low G hydrosync, so new building, obviously the polymer factory, um, and the new building, which is the fuel refinery. So this is a, a nice one. Uh, polymer factory, your fuel refinery definitely, and the polymer factory. Nice to just get away from those prefab buildings, because they are quite expensive from Earth. Um, you know, getting up to anywhere from 600 million, I think, for your uh, electronics uh, workshop, down to about three or 400 million for these buildings. So I do find if you're uh, maybe these two, because I think the polymers is, for me, was probably one of the first buildings that I would start building to start doing the research. The good thing I find with the polymer factory is it also sits outside your dome. Um, so therefore, um, whilst you're putting uh, things such as your G-towers and stuff inside your dome, it allows you to potentially reduce the unemployment rate uh, by having some polymer factories. Polymer factory does use water and fuel, uh, so just make sure you um, you keep that in mind when you're building your, your polymer factories. Next one, uh, smart homes. So this is the building of the smart homes, as we said before, um, which are these buildings here, and it gives you two choices. Uh, it allows you to build single three slots, or it allows you to build a large complex. Um, the smart home allows you your build, uh, sorry your residents to uh, recover from sanity while resting. Now I'm pretty good now around about I would say late game where I'm playing. Um, I potentially will tear this down and just build a G tower. 
Um, carry 10 more colonists. I do find this is probably easy um, uh, when you start getting into medium and mega domes um, because your initial 12 colonists are quite light. Now there's some down here on the breakthroughs as well. I think that allows you to um, carry, is it this one? Yes, yeah, so this one carries. So just see where you, you get it. Um, if you get an early breakthrough of carrying 20 colonists or through your engineering, you get uh, compact passengers. Either of those will help you um, get a bulk of uh, passengers rather than just the 12 and trickling in. Once again, this is more of an early game. Um, now that I'm around 200 souls plus into the game, I'm not bringing anyone else from Earth. Um, I'm breeding uh, so quickly. I would, I'm actually breeding faster than I could actually bring them from Earth. Electronics factory, also a very good one. Um, and that will think, electronics factory I think is the most expensive uh, fabricated item from Earth. I think it's around 600 million. Um, so definitely handy. Probably more once again around the, the late game. It uh, obviously uses rare metals to make your electronics. Um, your electronics are also used uh, majorly in your maintenance um, for late and end game, things like your lasers. Um, a lot of your parts are using electronics. Um, but it's a, it's a balance between uh, using your rare metals to get funding in order to bring parts over or using the rare metals to actually uh, build your plant. Now it does actually, it's quite high on the maintenance of the electronics. So when you do use these facilities, um, I would definitely recommend that you have um, your, so I have two here, and I've got them a night shift. So in this one here, um, it is full of engineers. Um, productivity is, uh, is at 10, um, but it uses three. So what I'm saying is just be careful with your medium game, you really need to make sure you're working at full capacity or what will happen is your maintenance is going to overweigh your production. Uh, next one, medium domes and I know like myself you're hanging to get this one just to get out of your, uh, your small domes um, and it is a big difference. Um, what you'll find with the actual medium domes itself, and let's just scroll out and find some open space. Um, here we have a large dome. Um, if we go through the actual build itself, this is the medium dome. So you can see how it sits there. Um, and this is your basic dome. So see how small your basic dome is. It makes a huge difference when you're actually building itself. So once again, you're starting with your small dome or your basic dome. Your medium dome um, has yeah has a has a great uh, advantage. Or what you're putting in there. If you do it in regards to uh, squares, your basic dome starts off with six large triangles, um, and your your medium dome starts off to 12. So it's effectively doubling the size of your basic dome. Um, so very, uh, definitely a handy one to, to, to get in. Um, I was semi-fortunate that it, was, it wasn't too far up the production tree. Um, in dome buildings require less maintenance, obviously handy. Um, water oxygen capacity expanded by 50%. So the storage, so it does, um, it does mean that obviously you get an increase of your storage uh, capability, so a nice one to have on the engineering. Um, archaeology, it provides comfortable living spaces for many colonists. Now I have uh, just recently, um, obviously just finished this one. This one is actually a spire, so much like your other spires, um, it's built through this one here and it will allow you to now build your your archaeology which then gives you the residence for 32 um, so your different residence buildings is obviously you have your living quarters for 14 which is the one that you normally start off with you have your smart homes which is for the same which is uh, 14 uh, sorry uh, 12 which is 
They're smarter homes, but less, so it just gives them more room. You have your apartments that do 24, or as we said, you can build your spire, um, which will actually poke up through, which is kind of cute, um, but it will allow you to actually have, uh, let me just get that one again, it will allow you to have 32 residents. Um, and it just depends how you're actually going to set it up. The downside to this is I think that once you build this building, it's going to be very hard for you to tear it down. Some of the other ones like water reclamation, uh, this one such as the sanitarium, uh, I think you can um, tear down after a little while and maybe swap it. But I think once you build your archaeology, you're not going to be able to tear it down. Uh, let's keep on going. Uh, storage, building construction, metals and concretes are reduced by 20%. Nice. Um, your mega dome. So we went through that before. Um, so I'll just go through that very quickly. This is your mega dome. And these are the other domes. So this is your medium dome that we just had before. And this is your basic dome. So basically your basic dome is sitting in the middle. Um, so you can see the difference between your mega dome. Obviously everyone wants to get the mega dome and they are, you can see how many, um, I've literally got nearly 200 colonists uh, in this mega dome, um, three homeless uh, and vacant work sites 48. So the problem that I have is, is not only the, the breeding, and the breeding they will move to other domes, but just making sure that every single one of these colonists are, are working. All right, moving right along. We finished the mega dome. Um, now we've got uh, out of dome buildings require less maintenance, a nice one. It's just that I got it a little bit late. Um, rare metal extractor is imp increased by 50%. Definitely a nice one. Um, it would have been nicer to get this early, more early in game. Um, but definitely a, a nice one to get to increase your, your rare metals. Um, one of my personal favourites, and I'm sure everyone's, and as you can see I've got this such late game in this, this one, drones can extract concrete from waste rock. That it, that's it. Waste rock liquefaction. So, I'm sure you're the same as, as me. You've got all these dumping sites that used to be full that used to look like this, um, they will convert it, all that rock, and they will turn it into concrete. That's why my concrete is insane, 2,428. Um, so um, get excited when you see that one because it's just another way of making concrete. It is actually probably a nice one to get late game um, because Literally, that's when you've started to uh, burn through all your concrete plants. Um, and therefore, it's nice to actually convert all that waste rock uh, that's stored in the dumping sites. The other positive bit is if you've got the deconstruction, um, you can actually then start reducing your, um, your dumping sites so it's not as unsightly, and then you can start building on these again. Moving along. Um, Passengers can carry 10 more colonists. So at this stage, I don't need this, plus it's really late game. Now remembering you've got this one that carries 10 more colonists, you've got this one that carries 10 more colonists, and you've got this one that carries 20 colonists. So personally, I think if you can get one of these early game, it will definitely help you on. Now the wonder for the engineer is the space elevator. So um, exports rare metals to earth and offers resupply materials and prefab at a preferential prices. So this one I have built, so I can actually show you a little bit more detail on it. Um, let's jump over here um, and let's have a look at here. Here it is, right here. So basically it's turned off at the moment and that's just because I want to make sure that I've got plenty of rare metals uh, to use it itself. Once I turn it on, it will load up to 100. Once it's got 100, um, it will shoot up the space elevator um, and it will ship those 100 uh, units straight back to, to Earth um, for cash. For delivery, um, what you then is when you go to your resupply, you'll find that you have a space elevator option. 
And if I just use the example of electronics, I can now buy electronics for 50 million. If I was doing it through a cargo rocket, well, we'd be buying electronics for 100 million. So let's just have a look at some of the others. So electronics is 50, machine parts 45, polymers uh, 30. And if I had to build a prefab, let's just do 100 million for a, a moisture vaporizer. Go back to your cargo rockets, electronics, we're at 100, 90, and 70, and prefab is 200. So you're looking at a 50% discount, um, and the funding is good. So you can see that by sending the stuff up there, you get instant funding, um, but having the space elevator means that you can instantly get things sent back to Mars as well. Um, which is great. So you don't have to wait for the rocket ship to actually make all its way in, um, and you can get them urgently. So it means that you should never, if your electronics or your machine parts run down to zero, um, you, shouldn't, um, you shouldn't run out of those supplies. Um, so that's good. So I think that is a great wonder to get um, first off. That would stabilize the parts, and that was the reason that I got it. Now, when I move into the other wonders, and we won't talk about them in details, we'll have a separate video for that, um, I can now pre-plan. So in this one here, I need electronics. So I can pre-plan to just get the electronics sent in order to build that, uh, that wonder. So that's why I focused on that one first. All right, so thank you very much. That was just going through the engineering research tree. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Uh, don't forget once again to hit the likes, um, hit the subscribes if you'd like to see more of Surviving Mars or other videos I'm doing, and please leave the comments because it helps me generate more content that you want to see. Okay, have a great day, happy gaming, and we'll see you in the next video.